Um, my story is a little bit different. Um, so similar to what we've heard before, um, I actually think that that would be a reflection of what my parents would have to say. Um, and I think that um, specifically with what's happening in kind of the political realm today, I think my parents have wholeheartedly experienced that. Um, and that's kind of where my story begins. I was actually born in 1987 in Fiji. Um, so a lot of people know where Fiji is because it's been on the Travel Channel for a very long time. Um, considered paradise for many. Um, and it's an amazingly beautiful country. But unfortunately, six weeks after I was born, that kind of paradise vanished for my parents. And there was a military coup there. And again, in that current climate that we're in, there's kind of always this conversation about you know, fighting democracy or, or things that are actually challenging our ideals or challenging these ideas of freedom and democracy. I think my parents actually live that. And they've seen what can happen if you don't fight for it truly and if it fails. Um, and I think that's really what prompted them to leave. Now, at, after I was born, six weeks later, with a six-week infant, they decided to pack everything up and decided to leave. They couldn't stay in that country any longer, and we immigrated to North America. We landed in Canada. Um, and then a few years after that, we came to the United States. Um, now, I grew up in a very different perspective than a lot of what the perceived immigrant community is. Um, and in fact, actually, I think I reflect a majority of our immigrant community if we really start to analyze it. And that is of a first generation immigrant. Specifically, I grew up in a household that was in a Western culture because we were in America, yet definitely had our ties to our cultural heritage of Fiji and specifically our Indian ancestry. And so my story has always been really unique because I've always had to play that role between understanding my heritage and understanding my culture. And that both of those are a very important part of me. Um, my parents were fortunate enough to have been educated very well in Fiji. And specifically, my parents actually went to Catholic schools. Um, Fiji was a colony of the British Empire. And specifically, Indians were brought there as indentured laborers. Um, being Catholic or being anything that is considered Christian was considered positive at that point. And so I think that from my perspective, both of my parents or my grandparents were actually Hindu. And I think that they realized in a cultural context in Fiji that in order for their children to get ahead, it would be important for them to maybe even convert, but also send their children to a school where they can get the best education available. Um, that actually gave them a, a head up or a step up when they came to the United States. Uh, they were fluent in English, reading and writing as well, and so they were able to actually get jobs in the professional market. That did not, however, mean that there weren't struggles. This is the early 90s in Seattle, still a small town, and although, just like Rita was explaining, there were small pockets of immigrant communities here, it wasn't this diverse city that we see around us. And there were definitely still stigmas happening, specifically on the West Coast, specifically with Asian immigrants, specifically with South Asian immigrants as well. Um, and I definitely think that my parents were a part of that and felt that backlash. And it was really confusing for them, especially because they came from a country where they were considered to be affluent and considered to be a person that could actually attain things. And to come to a society where one, not only what you have attained doesn't really matter because it wasn't done here, but then to come to a society where you're playing and having to play it to these racial systemic issues was difficult. And I think that it's something that we all had to manage together. So they came here to Tukwila, and they were like, we have to raise two young children. We actually started out at South Center Apartments on McAdam Road, which I'm pretty sure if anybody's lived in Tukwila, at some point you have started out at a South Center apartment on McAdam Road. So, right? It's where we all start, right? We're coming on up. So that's where, we're, that's where we were at. And a few months after my parents landed at that South Center apartment, we had all of our family come. So four other families came, and we were all scattered along South Center, <laughs> McAdam Road, in multiple apartments, visiting each other, trying to build those connections that my parents had with their family back in Fiji, in a very different place, with a very different culture, with two young kids trying to navigate everything. It was crazy, but also fun. Um, my parents were really involved in the community as well. Um, I think it was really important for them to stay involved, 
part one, and I, actually my mom is here, so maybe I shouldn't speak for her. <laughs> part one, because um, I think they saw what happens when you're not involved, specifically what happened in Fiji. Um, and part two, I think the United States really does provide us with that opportunity for civil engagement. And it really provides you with an opportunity to know what's happening in your community and to have that voice and to be active. Um, and so my parents were very active. In the early 90s, my dad was actually on the steering committee for Foster High School, specifically talking about the development of that new high school. Uh, my mother was also on the PTA for Tuckwell Elementary School while we were there, and she was one of the founding members of the Equity and Diversity Commission for the city of Tuckwell, which is still around. <laughs> so I think uh, that's kind of where I got my sense of civic engagement, although it didn't really kick in until later on. Um, I, we were in Tukwila, and so I started going to school. I started going to school at Tukwila Elementary. Um, it was really interesting. Again, this is the early 90s, so not the diverse community that we're used to now. Um, in fact, I think all of the people of color were my cousins. So I knew them. Yay. Um, so it worked out really well. Um, and actually, Council Member Duffy, who used to be here, used to share this story a lot. So I'm just going to do it on his behalf. Um, in kindergarten, I used to run down the hallway crying and would like stomp on my brother's classroom door to like make him open it up. And totally in honest truth, yeah, there could be like an adverse trauma, but it wasn't. So what had happened was I had overheard my cousins talking about a specific teacher in our school and they had called her a witch, I think. <laughs> well, that's what I heard at least. Um, and so, on Halloween, she decides to dress up as a witch. And being an imaginative kindergartner that I am, it was like, oh, hell no, all that are on. Like, what is going on? Where have my parents sent me? This is insane. And I'm pretty sure students may still feel that way sometimes in school, but you know, I had a real reason. Um, so that was definitely something that happened to me. Um, I remember as I was going through elementary school, the community actually started to become more diverse. Um, I specifically remember two events where I really am able to pinpoint the difference. Um, in early elementary school, I went into a classroom with a teacher and they were taking attendance. Um, and they had said my name and I said here. And they didn't register that I was here. And later on I was like, well, I'm here. And they're like, oh no, Jonathan is not your name. I know that your name is something else. And they said that my name was something that they felt was more ethnically appropriate. <coughs> and so, as a young child, I'm kind of like, ah, uh, but I'm Jonathan. What are you talking about? And so it didn't register to the teacher that my name was actually Jonathan until that other student came in the next day because they were absent. And it was like, oh, yeah, you are Jonathan. But the interesting thing is that I didn't really realize that that was a situation that was happening until later on in life. And I don't blame them as a person who's like racist because I really don't think that. But I think that there is a reality or, or something that we have to val validate that we bring this institutional racism into situations and we interact based on some of our own perceptions that we might have. And even though it's not something that is negative or it's something that we're not used to or doesn't even have a nefarious tone to it, it is something that can affect people. And even now as a 30-year-old man, it's a moment that as a six-year-old child, I still remember till this day. Now flip side, in fifth grade, everyone does their outdoor education, and here comes these city kids going out to camp, right? <laughs> and so we go out to camp at Camp Thunderbird at that point, and it was really interesting, because yes, the Tukwila School District is diverse, and you send us all out there, and we were definitely city kids out in the forest. Specifically, I remember I broke my arm playing kickball. That's another story. <laughs> but I, um, I broke my arm playing kickball, and I had this like bright, neon green cast while I was camping. And so as we were outside, I remember I had to like wrap it in plastic bags every day. So my four day camping trip, I was the dude with like the plastic bag arm <laughs> running around the forest with all the city kids. Like what's going on? So it was the best moment. But I remember that in that moment, we solidified as a fifth grade class not because we understood that we were the diverse kids or not because it was the city kids, but we realized that we were just a community of people who knew each other and interacted with each other and knew each other's perspectives. And that was important. Um, Showalter came, middle school was full of hormones and feelings, lots of feelings, like so many feelings, didn't even know you could have that many feelings. <laughs> um, 
but it was also a really interesting perspective. Um, in eighth grade, actually, something happened that I think changed my, my perspective on life. Uh, I was walking across the street was, uh, on 46th Avenue South across 144th, um, and I was a pedestrian and I was hit by a car. Um, I hit the car, flew off, and like, lost my boot, but then the driver drove away. And so I actually was hurt, and I didn't go to school for a week. I had to get stitches on my lip, dental work done as well, uh, really sore. But I think it was kind of one of those moments that I started to realize, like, hey, what we plan actually does matter. And when you have a sidewalk, maybe we should light it up. And maybe we should make sure that it's safe. And so I think that really started to kind of put my mindset into, hey, there's some things that we can do better here that are actually going to benefit our community. I also think that it helped that my parents were always involved in everything in the community. So it was like, hey, we knew what was going on. Um, when I went to Foster is really when I really started to get active into the community. I ran for ASB, um, held a couple positions that way. Um, sorry, Foster High School is our local high school. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, just in case. Um, so it was a really interesting time for me. Um, I started to serve on the Equity and Diversity Commission as well while I was in high school. I think I was the only one at that point to serve in a high school commission. Um, it was really a different time in Tukwila. It was finally a time when we were starting to recognize the diversity of our community, but we didn't know what was happening. It was like, what is it? And so I tried to work on actually introducing MAP, which is, stands for Multicultural Action Committee in the high school. And it was really a place where we can start to talk about diversity, the issues that different communities were, were having, as well as really celebrate the different cultures that were in the community. And I think that was a really important part for Tukwila because we started to really revel in the diversity and how great it is and what it brought to our community. Um, after high school, I, my parents actually gave me a graduation gift where I was able to go to the South Pacific for a month and a half with my grandfather. Specifically, I was able to go back to Fiji. And it was my first time going back. I think it was for them a chance for them to send me home. And I think when I came back, I had a very inter an interesting perspective of what was home. Um, during that trip, my grandfather was very open, really explained kind of the history of his family and our family and what, how Fiji came to be in our story as a part of this country. And there was this moment where we went to the archives and we were actually searching through archives of um, immigrants or actually indentured laborers. They were called girmitias, or it's a short term for agreements. And it was a slang term that the indentured laborers arriving from India coined for their people. Um, and it was because they would sign the documents of their indentured labor. Um, I actually saw my great grandfather's indentured labor document and it was just a poignant moment for me in my life where I was like, whoa, this is real. Like this was not just a story of a person, but this was an actual human being who's my blood. That everything that I do is a reflection of their work as well. And this continued journey. And I think that changed my perspective. It also made me realize that Fiji is not my home like my parents, but Tukwila is my home. And that it wasn't an American perspective that I was bringing when I was traveling abroad and continue to travel abroad, but it was the perspective of this community, the community of, of different backgrounds. And we're not just saying different ethnic or cultural backgrounds, but truly different backgrounds, different age groups, different education levels, different economic status, and really a place where we are able to express ourselves, challenge each other, and really get to a better place and move forward. And I think that trip really solidified that for me. From that point, I really have just focused on school. <laughs> so like that, that's where it's at, it's school. Um, but I know that my memories of home are always still gonna be Tukwila. So as I get on the train every morning and head to UW, and I pass all of those wonderful things, I still think about how can we develop a better community? How can we be more reflective of what, who is actually here? Um, and it makes me realize that this community of home wasn't just built on a physical place or the house that my parents bought. It was built on the relationships that we've, we've garnered, that we've fostered, those bonds that we've created as each other. And so, yeah, my story is very different to my parents. And in some ways, I understand their story and I understand why they may not see Tukwila as their home. But for someone like me, there's no other choice.